Today I'm gonna show you guys how to build this curved vocal booth isolator for only $14. True Sound Studios is in your ears. Hey guys, what is up? I'm Wiesna. As always, we are here at my studio, True Sound Studios. And today I'm gonna show you guys how to build your own curved vocal booth isolator for only $14. You guys can find a link to all the materials I used to build this isolator in the description of this video. Okay guys, so here's what you're gonna need for supplies. You're gonna need some foam core board. I chose the ones with the grid lines in it just to make it easier to cut. You're gonna still need a straight edge though. Um, you're gonna need a glue gun with some glue sticks. You're gonna need some sort of cutting blade or knife, some tape. Um, you're gonna need two electrical ground clamps, and then you're gonna need a dowel that fits through the small hole of the electrical ground clamp. You're gonna need some foam, somewhere around an inch thick. And then you're gonna need some fabric if you wanna make this thing look a little nicer. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is cut your piece of foam. Now this happens to be foam from like a bed liner. Um, you can use acoustic foam, doesn't really matter, but make sure it's at least an inch thick. Otherwise this thing's not gonna do too much for you. Okay, so what I did is I cut this to 15 inches by 28 inches. Why 28 inches? Because this piece of foam core board is 28 inches long. So now I need to cut my foam core board to the same height as my piece of foam is. So it's 15 inches. So we're just gonna measure up 15 inches. Take your straight edge. Uh, don't throw this out, we're gonna need it. So what we need to do is make relief cuts on the one side of this foam core board so that we can take this flat piece of foam core and make it curved. So every three grids on here is roughly an inch and a half. So I'm gonna make relief cuts every three grids from the top to the bottom of this piece of foam core. It's important to know that we are just cutting the top layer. We're just making a, a really light cut just through the one layer of the foam core board. We don't wanna go all the way through it. Um, so all the way down, I made all these lines. Um, I know it's gonna be tough to see. So what we need to do now is we need to flip this over. As you can see, what I've started to do here is I started to fold um, right where those relief cuts are. And it makes like a crunching noise, but as you can see, what's happening is now it's gonna allow us to curve this piece of foam core board. So just go ahead and do that for all those sections. Okay, so there you go. Now we have a piece of foam core that now we can make into whatever shape that we want. Okay, so now we need to grab our piece of cut off foam core board and we need to make like strips out of this. So once again, we'll probably just do the three square thing again and I'm gonna cut three squares in and just make a couple and cut them all along the long side of the foam core board. Okay, and there you go. That should be sufficient for the supporting the backside of our flimsy foam core board right now. Okay, so since we're not trying to make this absolutely perfect, um, what we need to do now is on the back side where our relief marks are, we're gonna need to glue this so that it kind of holds its shape. Um, and you can make this a little wider if you want, a little thinner. Maybe I'm gonna do mine like, maybe something like that. Um, which turns out to be about 19 inches from here to here. I'm gonna turn this around. Now you can also get like a protractor out, you know, make a perfect uh, circle and follow this right around. But I don't think it's gonna matter too much because in the end it's gonna be covered with fabric. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna glue the backside so that this thing will kind of hold its shape.
Okay, so I got done gluing this whole thing and now as you can see, it's actually like held its shape. Okay, so the next thing you should do is take one of these strips and lay it over the top and just cut it to the length and just cut it to the width of the foam core. And all this is gonna do is just kind of support this when we glue on our foam. And all this is gonna do is just try to hold this shape um, because the foam is a little bit more difficult to glue in there and get it to sit right and not destroy our whole shape that we just created. And I'm just gonna do the same thing for the other side. Okay, so now it is time to fit our foam inside of our foam core semi-circle, half-circle thing. So just kind of just jam this into here. And just make sure it fits first before we go ahead and glue this. So there you go, that fit kind of snug. Um, kind of nice having these supports. It just kind of helps hold this all together. And all I'm gonna do is just now pull this away and put a little glue on here and just kind of stick this together. And you will have to hold each part, especially if you're using hot glue, for this to dry so you can move on to the next section. I guess you could try to tape this if you really wanted to, and then just repeat that all along the top and bottom of your vocal booth. Okay, so here you go. This is essentially the semi-finished um, vocal booth, this homemade vocal booth. Um, and as you can see, it's actually, it's actually quite solid, but it's also fairly light because we just got foam and foam core. Now these supports, you can leave on here if you really want to. Um, they do help make this more rigid. Uh, it depends on your setup if you want to keep them on. I'm going to keep them on for the time being, uh, especially during um, the rest of this construction process. So all we need to do now is just glue our dowel on the back side of our vocal booth. Um, I'm going to put a beads of hot glue all along the side of here because this is what is going to support this. Um, and keep it from standing up. And I'm gonna leave about 10 inches at the bottom here, and this is how we're gonna mount it onto our mic stand. So I'm gonna cut this to about 25 inches. And just let this set up, and uh, as you can see here, we got our extra 10 inches of room. This is how we're gonna mount this to our mic stand. Okay, so while that dowel is gluing, here is the top of my mic stand. Just to make this a little easier, I took this stand off. And now I'm gonna also take off this shock mount pop filter. And this is the top of our mic stand now. So just pretend that, you know, the, the feet are down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two ground clamps, our electrical ground clamps. We're gonna slide one on here and the other one. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tighten our ground clamps to the post that mounts our shock mount um, for our microphone on. Now, since we only have 10 inches of extra dowel to mount this onto, I'm gonna maybe put one at like seven inches and maybe one just, just shy of that, just so we can move this around. And obviously, these are just screwed down with a screwdriver, so you can always move these again, but this might be a good place to start. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten these down. And obviously make sure that they're both straight. So there you go, this is how we're gonna mount that curved vocal booth thing that we just built onto our mic stand. Okay, as you can see, we have our shock mount mounted to our mic stand. And we have our electrical ground clamps so that these holes in the back here are essentially lining up with our the front of our pop filter. So now the last thing to do is just very simply, we're gonna slip this dowel through the electrical ground clamps. I'm just gonna take that off for right now, just to make it a little easier to do this. Take this, slide it through the dowels in the back. And then just tighten down the last screw to hold your vocal booth in place. Okay, and there you go. This is our custom made vocal booth. So we got our Samson CO1 condenser mic, a nice budget friendly 
uh, condenser microphone, great for vocals. Flip up your pop filter. There you go, now you have built your own curved vocal booth. Okay, so I'm gonna do like an unofficial test real quick just to kind of show you. So on top of this camera is a Rode VideoMic Pro. It's a $230 microphone, so it should be pretty good just to do a quick test on how much this thing blocks out sound. So obviously I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. I'm... This is with the vocal isolator in front of my face. This is with the vocal isolator in front of my face. Hey, check one, two. Hey, check one, two. Hey, check one, two. Hey, check one, two. So guys, I think that vocal booth isolator turned out really good. Um, just a few things I forgot to mention. Uh, number one, I did take the bottom support off of the isolator, the, the, like the two strips I glued on the top and bottom of it. Um, mainly because it was kind of in the way of the microphone. So the other thing is, is I never covered the actual vocal booth in the black fabric, obviously just to make it look a little nicer. Um, obviously you guys can do that if you want. I just didn't do it. So if you guys like this video, make sure you check out the next video where I test this acoustic vocal booth isolator that we just made in a studio. We're gonna use that Samson CO1 condenser microphone, which is only a $70 microphone. And I'm also gonna test it with a hundred dollar budget friendly interface and you guys will get to see what all that sounds like together so if you guys like this video consider subscribing and hit that like button follow us on instagram for daily posts you can find the beats that i make right here at the studio on our soundcloud page true sound studios also mixes and masters your tracks so once again guys thanks for watching this video i'm wiesna we're at true sound studios and true sound studios is in your ears